On today's episode of Home Built Workshop, we are back on the acoustic guitar build. I am going to get the kerfing as well as the side bracing glued in. I'm also going to become a dusty mess and do some bus driving. Stick around. God, it's so cool. What's going on? Welcome to this episode of Homeboat Workshop. We are back on the acoustic guitar build today. I'm going to get the kerfing glued in as well as the bracing for the sides. And there's a big fly in here flying around. So if he comes to visit us, sorry about that. Now to glue the kerfing in place, it's going to take a lot of small clamps. Now you could go and buy a bunch of small spring clamps or something like that, but I'm trying to keep the cost on this project down. So another popular option that I've seen uses these really cheap clothespins and rubber bands. I've got all my clothespins out of the package and now we're going to increase their clamping strength by wrapping them with rubber bands. Now I have talked to people who have told me that you don't really need the rubber bands. By the time you get the kerfing aligned with all these clothespins there's plenty enough clamping force but rubber bands really aren't that expensive. So I'm going to go ahead and add them to all of these clothespins. Now in doing a little bit of experimenting with these particular rubber bands I found that four twists, I think that's going to be five wraps works pretty well. Your results may vary. So we have one, two, three, four. If I compare one with the rubber band to a regular one, I can feel a little bit more strength on the rubber band. It's not a big difference, so I can definitely imagine that these are probably fine without the rubber band. So here I have all of my kerfing clamps ready to go. How many of these did I make all together? About 200 of them. I think that's going to be enough to do both sides so that I don't have to wait for one side at a time. Of course I haven't done this yet so it may or may not be enough, but we're about to find out. For the kerfing, I have ordered up some full length pieces of Spanish cedar. Really, the only reason I chose Spanish cedar over the myriad of other species of wood is this smells great. Really, I think whatever kind you choose, whatever species you want to use, it's all going to do the same thing from what I can tell. And I don't really know if there's any reason to use a different species one over another, but I went with Spanish cedar because I knew it was going to smell great. And this is standard kerfing. It's not reverse kerfing or anything like that. I wanted to go with some standard kerfing just for simplicity. Oh, and you like my great guitar build off shirt? Freestyle category for 2022. If you want to see more information, there's a link in the description. You can head over and find out more about the great guitar build off. Let's quit messing around and glue in some kerfing. I've shifted the position of the sides in my mold so that I have full access to the outside perimeter. I decided to take a couple of minutes and just do a little bit of a test run just so I can understand how this process is going to go. As I'm test fitting this, I just broke the piece, which is not a big deal. I see a lot of guys cut these or break them into smaller pieces anyway, so I was trying to do it in one step, but it's probably a better idea to go ahead and do it in sections. So I'm just going to break that off, clean that up with a utility knife. And now that we have a shorter piece, we'll just break that to fit once we get this section glued in. In doing my test fitting, I noticed that the kerfing does not exactly match the angle of the heel block. Now really this is not an issue as far as I can tell, but I want to try to make this as neat and tidy as possible, so I'm going to sand the edge of the kerfing to match the angle of the block so that I get the best fit possible. With the fit looking good, it's time to apply some glue. Uh -oh. 
when I'm lining up the kerfing, I'm making sure it sticks above the sides just a little bit. You want it to be just a little bit proud because we're going to radius this when it's all dry. For the next piece, I'm just going to break them into smaller sections. It's definitely easier working with a shorter piece than it is trying to work with a long one. Now on this very last piece, the neck block falls right in the middle of one of the curves. Now, while I understand that it's perfectly acceptable to snap this off and leave a slight gap there, I want to try to avoid that gap. So rather than leaving this a little bit short, I'm going to sand this down just a little bit to try to get that fit as perfect as I can. Almost. We're right there. And there's one half. We'll just repeat the process over here. From here on out, the process is exactly the same as the first half. This time though, I'm already planning to break these into pieces as I glue them on. And just as I did previously, I also sanded the angle on the kerfing to try to match the neck block as close as possible. There's our last clamp. Looks like we used about, I don't know, 85 clothespins or so. So I think by starting with 200 of these clamps, let's call them, it's probably a good number. That's good change if you're doing maybe a dreadnought or some other larger size, but for what I'm doing here, this OM, it's gonna be fine. I just realized as I was gonna flip this over and glue in the other side kerfing, I forgot to sand the insides of this guitar nice and smooth. I meant to do that before I glued any kerfing, but since I've already glued one side, now I'm gonna let this sit for a few minutes, then I'll flip it over, try to clean out any of the squeeze out that I can get to, then I'll sand what I can anyway for now, the best we can do. Then I'll glue in the other curving. Sound like a plan? I've removed my spreaders from the mold and I'm just using a stick with a pointed end to get in there and remove any of the squeeze out. After about 45 minutes or so, I'm gonna remove my clamps and now I can do my sanding. If I'd have sanded ahead of time, I would have just flipped the piece over and glued the second side while this side is still drying. I guess if you use my forget to sand ahead of time method, you don't really need 200 clamps because you're going to glue one side at a time. <laughs> I'm using a round sanding block to get in there and sand everything nice and smooth. There's a couple areas that I couldn't get to very well, so I just touched them up by hand. All right, now let's glue the second side. Since this process can get a little bit repetitive to watch again and again, I decided to try one of those fancy time lapse for this side of the kerfing. However, when I did that, I ended up with a lot of flickering from the lights. I've played with different settings on the camera and I can't quite seem to get it to go away. If anybody has any good suggestions for a GoPro Hero 10 as to how I can help eliminate some of that flicker, I'd love to hear your suggestions. Leave them down below in the comments. There we have it. I'm going to give this about 45 minutes or an hour or so to dry before we move on. Well, time got away from me a little bit, as it sometimes does in life. It is now the next day. I'm quite certain that this glue is good and dry. Let's unclamp this and get some side braces installed. Now it's time to brace the sides. I'm gonna do five braces per side. Now I went back and forth a little bit as to what species of wood I wanted to use. I do have the offcuts of Paduke from the sides that I thought about using, but I wanna save those 
to make some purfling. I probably have plenty enough to do the, both the purfling as well as the side braces, but I want to be just double sure that I have enough to make the purfling. So instead, I'm going to keep with the maple and paduke theme. I've got some pieces of maple here that are slightly figured, which doesn't really matter for this application. These are about four millimeters thick by about eight millimeters wide. I think they're going to work perfectly. We'll cut them to fit different locations inside of the body here. Get these glued in. I'll use a piece of chalk to mark the locations of the side braces. I'm not doing any fancy math here. I'm just laying them out so they look about evenly spaced by eye. We're going to work on these one at a time. So I'm just going to take my piece of maple roughly mark where I need to cut it. I'm going to cut it just a little bit long and then we'll sand it to fit. Now using my flat sanding beam, I'm going to carefully round over the edges of the show face. This is just for aesthetics and just makes it look a little bit neater. I'll also sand the show face as well as the back surface nice and flat. Now I'll carefully sand the brace to length so that it fits in between the kerfing. Since the side bracing is a little bit thicker than the narrow end of the kerfing, I want it to look really nice and as seamless as possible, so I'm going to add a small taper on either end. This is going to make the brace look like it tapers down and meets the kerfing. Again, just aesthetics. And here's what we're left with. A nice thin strip of maple with a couple tapers on the end and slightly rounded corners. Looks neat to me. Now we can just apply some glue, making sure to get some on the back as well as the narrow edge of the sides. I want to try to glue this to the kerfing as well. This will just get lined up on my chalk line and I'll use a couple of clamps to hold it in place. There's the first one, nine more to go. Well, that's the last side brace glued in place. Now I need to radius the kerfing to match the same radius as we put on the sides originally. That's why we glued them on just a little bit proud of the sides. It gives us some room to sand them down to match the sides. Just like we did before, I'm gonna chalk everything up. I've got my piece of chalk here. It's getting a little bit smaller and a little more beat up, but it's gonna work just fine. I'm gonna chalk all the edges and then we're gonna take it to the radius dish, making sure that I get the right radius dish on the top and then the other radius on the back. I'm gonna start on the back, so I wanna make sure I'm using my 28 foot radius, which, no, I almost said that wrong. Since I'm starting with the back, I wanna make sure I'm using the 15 foot radius for the back, which is this guy right here. Don't use this one yet. It's important at this step to stop often and check your progress. That's where the chalk is important. You can see right away where you still have material that needs to be removed. That's one side. Now we'll do the same thing for the top. Chalk it up. There goes my chalk getting smaller. I guess I'll have to borrow a piece from my daughter. Time to renew my bus driver's license. There we go. Man, that bus driving is a lot of work. But that Spanish cedar smells incredible. I think we're now ready.
to really take this thing out of the mold for the first time. Maybe. I better write on there which one's the back. I don't want to mix up the sides later on. But there it is. There's our body. It's gonna wrap up this episode. In the next episode of the acoustic guitar build, we're gonna be putting an end wedge in here. Guess I gotta to get to figuring out what exactly I wanna do for that. Ah, that's so cool. I have a completed rim. Well, mostly. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed following along with this one. Make sure you're subscribed and click the notifications to make sure you get notified when I upload new videos, especially if this is one you're following. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.